tik tik What's up guys, this is your iPad bro and welcome to another video. In this video, I will show you how I recreated the iconic Linus Tech Tips intro video all on the iPad Pro using a light motion. So to tell you a little bit about my alter ego in the real world, I do motion graphics and design and animation. I'm what you could call a motion graphics generalist. I do motion graphics and design, I do typography, kinetic typography, I do 3D animations, I do character animations, I do compositing, a little bit of VFX, you name it, a little bit of everything. So my main tool doing all those things has always been After Effects. You know, I've been using it for over 10 years and it's pretty much the industry standard. It's only natural for me as an iPad Pro user to look for an alternative to After Effects on the iPad Pro. And the app that I found to do exactly what I need is a light motion. So when I started my first job uh, doing motion graphics, my supervisor basically told me that I would survive just knowing about position, rotation, and scale, and opacity. And he was right. A lot of titles you see are just scaling up or moving in Z space and just fading using the opacity. It's all very basic and knowing these things is gonna build you a good foundation if you wanna start in motion graphics. So a light motion does all of that for me. And then looking at the LTT intro video, I think these are all the tools that I need to recreate exactly that. So let's go ahead and open a light motion and I'll show you exactly how I did that. I'll be using the trackpad here so you can see where my cursor is. Let's go ahead and open a light motion and I already have the project up so you can see. And uh, let's go ahead and play this and see what we have going on. Cool. So that's the recreated intro. I'm just gonna go ahead and mute that for now. We don't want to keep playing something that I don't own. I used the actual clip to reference the timing and the music as well. But since I want to show you the process, I'm just going to turn off that layer right here. This is my reference video and, and this is my audio layer. So let me just grab this layer. First of all, the, make sure that nothing is selected. And then I'm going to grab it with this three line handle right here. And let's just drag it down. So we're only going to focus on these layers that I have right here, which is basically the elements I use to recreate the animation. Okay, so I mentioned putting in the reference video, so I basically have something to time it. And to do that, I added some markers, which you can see right here. These are the red lines up in your timeline. And whenever you're on a marker, this thing turns green, and you can basically add markers by clicking that or clicking that to remove it. So I did that throughout the whole uh, the length of the intro. Just put in my timings uh, in place before I started animating. So the first element that we have here is our main square. And the, you can add a square like this by just deselecting here and then adding shape. And then selecting one of these shapes right here if ever you're going to start out on a new project. And by clicking the layer, we can see all its properties like border and shadow, color and fill. I colored this exactly how it was in the, in the original intro video. And I just used this eyedropper tool to grab that color. But let's go ahead and see what kind of animation we have for this. So the first thing that happens is this turns, this rotates and shakes a little bit at the top. And I did that by going here in the move and transform. You can see that I'm in the position section and these are my keyframes as well as the rotation and these are the keyframes to my animation. Let's go ahead and play that real quick. Let's bring the, bit, the volume of this down. So let's turn off the music so you don't need to hear it each time because this is not my property. Okay, so going back to the main square and looking at our move and transform 
um, keyframes right here, we can see that we're keeping the uh, main square almost half of the video. It's up there and just morphing around. So to do the morphing, basically, I had to animate the scale right here. And then I did animate the rotation right around here when it turns into keyboard mode. So basically, I just used scale, position, and rotation to animate this main square. Again, those are basic things, but they're the fundamental things to doing motion graphics. And one last thing about the main square that we have is we can also even keyframe our colors. So we can see here that it changes from red into a silver and in a darker space gray. Let's go ahead and take a look at our other elements. We have the screen right here. So it moves up along with the square when it turns into an iPad and moves up a little bit too when it gets on that new uh, magic keyboard. You can also see a rotation animation and other scale animations right here. So one thing to note with animating with a light motion is there's two ways you can move stuff around and then add, and then adding keyframes. One was selecting the layer and then going to move and transform and then just dragging this around and then adding a keyframe by pressing this button right here. Or alternatively, let me just undo that. Oops, what did I do? All right. Whew, I panicked for a little bit. Or alternatively, if you want automatic keyframes on your animation, anytime you move it here or change the parameters in this window, it's automatically going to create a keyframe for you. So let's go ahead and double tap here to hold and then drag it around. And as you can see, we already have a keyframe made for us right here. And I'm not sure if you noticed it too, but when I started moving the layer here, it presented me with snapping options. So you can see there's a line going on. I'm just moving horizontally or I can move vertically or I can snap into a point like that. And again, it's going to automatically give you a keyframe. So let's undo that. And that goes the same with everything, whether you're editing a point or moving it around, moving the position, or if you're rotating or scaling, anytime you're animating and you move a variable in this window, it's going to automatically give you a keyframe. So let's look at what else we have in this uh, composition. So I told you about the screen, and then we have a home button right here. It just appears real quick on the first iPad, and then it loses it here when it turns into the iPad Pro. And then we also have, what's this? We have our, Folio keyboard. Let's rename that by typing it here. Folio keyboard. There's actually a bug that I can't do a capital F, but that doesn't matter right now. We have a folio keyboard. So the folio keyboard is, uh, is a little different because this time I animated the points. As you can see, I go here and edit points and we can see that there's an animation going on because we have keyframes. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit on that. So as you can see, these two points are animated, starting from the base of the iPad and then going down and then keeping that shape right here and then moving a little bit. Instead of scaling and position, we can clearly see that these are animated using the edit points. Let's take a look at the trackpad. I'm gonna go ahead and rename that trackpad. And this is going to be a simple scale animation, I believe. Yes, this is a simple scale animation. And then we have this section right here. This is actually just a representation of the Apple Pencil. And this one is also just a scale animation. We can see that we have a rectangle right here. Just that quick layer. This is the the back of the magic keyboard and which makes the iPad float. So I just added that simple layer. It only appears on this section of the composition right here. 
So in the original Linus Tech Tips intro video, they had headphones, but since I have these Google Pixel Buds, I figured I'll just do that. So these are the Pixel Buds. The Pixel Buds layer is actually a group. So why did I group this? Well, we can see that there's a keyframes on this layer, and I think this is just a position animation right here. So instead of me animating all the individual layers of the Pixel Buds, I just group them together so I can animate the position as one whole thing. But let's go ahead and take a look at this group and open it up. Oh, so I actually grouped it along with the face and the smile as well. And this is actually the earbuds layer. I have two of them. Both of them are animated with using the position so they can start a little from the middle and then move to the side when the face comes up. Let's go inside the pixel buds group. So basically I have just three shapes, two circles and then one arc to make the pixel buds and these are all just animating in scale. Let's go ahead and check that. Yeah, we can see that I have keyframes on scale for all of these layers right here. Okay, let's go back into our main comp by just clicking on this. And right there, we're back in our main comp. So yeah, this whole group, this whole thing is being animated together, just moving down. So there's a little easing going on with this uh, particular layer. So what it basically did was make sure you're in the move transform and you're in the position section and there's keyframes here. And this is going to appear. This icon right here is going to appear. Let's click on that. So we can see that I start slowly and then it gradually gets faster right here. And let's check out that animation real quick. So it's more of like a... And lastly, we have the iPad Bro logo. And I just treated it with a little four color gradient right here. I think the four color gradient and most of the other effects are part of a membership here in the Light Motion app. It's cheaper than After Effects, but I mean, I'm sure it's not as professional. I can't export like ProRes on this. If you're an iPad first kind of creator, I think it's worth it to get the membership if you're going to be using a Light Motion a lot. So there you go, guys. That is my recreation of the iconic Linus Tech Tips intro video all on the iPad Pro. So some of the things that was involved with creating this project is creating elements using basic shapes, using the basic transform properties like position, scale, rotation. We went over how to do keyframe animation and some tips doing that here in the light motion. And I also showed you how to animate the paths and the color of some of the layers. Okay, so what did I learn from this video? I think that a light motion is a really powerful tool it has all the basic things you need to do motion graphics work and a lot more, especially if you have the subscription. But having position, rotation, scale, opacity, that's already a big deal if you want to do something. And you just have to be a little creative with it. You can't do anything if you're not going to spend the time to do it. And that being said, I was hoping this video was going to be more of a tutorial. But doing the whole thing and trying the app out took way longer than I expected. I have over an hour of footage of just me tinkering around with it. And I don't think that was going to help me out with, especially if I'm going to edit on the iPad and just having that much footage to get a point across was too much. So, so I think this walkthrough on how the project went, uh, was good enough. Let me know down in the comments if you like this whole walkthrough over the project, or if you want to see more of a step-by-step -step instructions with these kinds of things. So I'm planning on doing a lot of these tutorials. I would really love your feedback on how you want to see it. Do you want it sped up? Do you want a step-by-step, -step, um, process or are you cool with just having me go over the project when it's finished and showing you the challenges and some pointers and how you're going to approach the project i think although a light motion is a really strong and capable tool i don't think it's at that point yet where it can replace after effects especially in a professional environment after effects is still the industry standard a lot of people use it Almost everybody should be using it, especially if you work in the entertainment industry or in a production house. But yeah, I think a light motion has a lot of potential. I won't be surprised if Adobe decides to put the After Effects on the iPad, but competition is good. 
I think a light motion has a long way to go after Apex does have like a 20 year advantage over it. Given some time and given a, a lot more users, I think a light motion is going to be a good tool for iPad Pro users and I plan on doing a lot more of my graphics for this channel using this app. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you like this video, press the thumbs up button and if you want to see more videos like this, more tutorials and uh, basically just do anything on the iPad, click subscribe and stay tuned. Thank you guys again. This is your iPad bro and I'll see you soon. Bye.